Well, uh, hello again and good morning. Um, forgive the uh, lockdown look. Uh, I think my hairdresser will be the first person I visit when I'm uh, when I'm allowed out. Richard's given me permission to follow on from his helpful "God is not behind COVID-19" talk. And then Miranda uh, last week said, uh, "I want to hear God's voice." And then this morning we've had the service and Richard said, God wants to communicate. What do you think God might be saying? If God has allowed coronavirus to sweep and paralyse the world with all the catastrophic consequences, social and financial devastation, quite apart from health, what do you think God might be saying? It's natural to start human, isn't it, and to think small. So question one, I think, is what uh, do you think God might be saying to me? Well, I'm in the high-risk age group with an underlying health problem, so I'm feeling rather vulnerable. But I do have hope with a capital H, and the celebration of Easter and Resurrection were very precious. I love all the threads and comments about comfort for Christians during this crisis. But Easter was also about suffering, wasn't it? And Jesus is saying to me, if you're a Christian, Alan, deny yourself, take up your cross, follow me. I'm still working on that. He's telling me not to be ashamed of him. Not to be embarrassed about confessing him to others. Perhaps you've been given an opportunity of getting a better perspective on your Christian life, thinking about what's really important. Well, I think God wants us to think a little bigger. So question two is, what do you think God might be saying to my family? And all those people, there's many people in my contact list. Like me, you've probably got family and friends who are not believers and have no faith. I know that we're desperately waiting, uh, well most of us, for the end to this lockdown, but uh, will there ever be a better opportunity, I wonder? of sharing our faith. I'm also grieving for the families of Norman Wells and Peter Holmes. I didn't know either of them personally, but I prayed that they would survive. God answered those prayers with a no. He's taken them to be with him, and he's left us behind. And so I ask, why? Why, O oh Lord? Fortunately, the Psalms are a great comfort, full of lament and mourning and questions we ask of God. Why, O oh Lord? How long, O oh Lord? Where are you, O oh Lord? Let's extend the map a bit further. So what do you think God might be saying to uh, St Mary's and the parish? Well, I think I'll leave that one to Richard and Nate. Somebody was saying on Premier Christian Radio a few days ago that with the digital revolution, church will never be the same. Haven't they done a great job, they and the church team, in maintaining Sunday worship like this morning and prayer meetings and Monday's men's group at the Bell. has been great company as we sip our half pints at, uh, at home. What do you think comes next? Well, what do you think God might be saying to the church? The Anglican and all the other denominations. Well, you've probably seen Pat Allerton, who's had so much great publicity as he uh, proceeds around London, blazing out amazing grace and praying for people. Yes, the gospel's about God's love. Not just judgment, isn't it? 
a couple of years ago, I think it was, uh, Richard uh, encouraged us to read R.T. Kendall's book. It's entitled, Prepare Your Heart for the Midnight Cry, A Call to be Ready for Christ's Return. He argues that the Christian church is actually asleep and calls us, calls the church to work for the day when the Word and the Spirit come together and there's real revival. We're being told to differentiate, aren't we, between what's essential and what's not essential. And then we read all the trivial agendas that seem to be dominating some of the church. How best to do this and is that possible and all the rest of it. I just wonder, is our culture telling the, even the church what it should and what it shouldn't be talking about? What's PC and, and all that? So much of God's word seems to be incredibly relevant today. I'm just doing Nicky Gumbel's uh, Bible in one year. So I spent the last few weeks wading through the history of the children of Israel. God wants them in the promised land full of good and wonderful things. What are they doing? Well, they're constantly disobeying. They're constantly disregarding his existence forgetting how he's led them in the past. So God disciplines them, he judges, he allows plague on his people and even kills some of them. And as they enter the promised land, God is fighting on their side and annihilating all their enemies. Now I know we read the Old Testament in the light of the New Testament, but the way in which God deals with the opposition it's quite mind-boggling at times. So we take heart from the wonderful promises in the Old Testament, but let's not forget that God does not tolerate anything or anyone that doesn't put obedience to him first. Let's not forget the exile and the prophets and the 24-7 initiative and now the 714 from Chronicles God is asking his people, not their enemies, he's asking his people, bearing his name to repent, to throw away the foreign gods. Question five. It's not quiz night, don't worry. What's uh, God saying to our nation? What's God saying to the world even? Now we're into very interesting and debatable territory. I'm not old enough to remember the Second World War, but I've been reading about how King George VI called the nation to pray on Sunday the 26th of May 1940. And the result was the miracle of Dunkirk. And there were other occasions too. What's happened to our country in the last 80 years? Well, we think about the worship of consumerism, coveting all things secular, celebrating sexual violence, destruction of family life, undermining of marriage. Now we're trying to reconfigure human biology to fit our preferences. Oh, and if you're following Dave, David Brennan's comments on his breakfast site, even the killing of unwanted babies, he points out that the same NHS that's striving to save lives at the moment is actually carrying out 200,000 abortions each year. And as we heard last week from Andrew, the world now persecutes children's Christians like never before. Something like nearly 300 million Christians live in places where they experience high levels of persecution quite apart from war zones and regimes where there's an absence of justice. Remember all those news stories that dominated our screens before coronavirus, all the mess and the darkness. No one wants to be the nation's prophet, it seems. Everybody wants to be the nation's friend. Now, I know we mustn't be over judgmental, but on the other one longs for a prophetic voice to speak loudly. 
Perhaps this pandemic is the beginning of God's judgment. In an allowing this to happen, God is withholding his protection, a warning perhaps of judgment to come. Perhaps his patience is running out. You may not agree. I just think we need to recognise that it might possibly be the case. What else can we imagine God allowing to happen that would bring the world back to himself? And in the Bible, I see God being the author of plagues in Exodus, in the prophets and in Revelation. God shaking the nations and Jesus making it very clear that in the time before his second coming, there'll be war and earthquakes, famines, and also plagues and epidemics. There is good news, isn't there? Our Heavenly Father, creator of the universe, is still in control. God is sovereign and still in charge of this world. Hallelujah. Nothing can happen without his permission. And more good news is that God actually wants to help. He loves the world. He wants to save it. Jesus came not to condemn, but to save people from condemnation. And we see signs of his grace everywhere, don't we? How this crisis is bringing communities together, drawing out great acts of self-sacrifice. The neighbourhood watch in our lane has really taken off. Not just Thursday clapping, but uh, all the good deeds and kindness being shown. And this is just what the good book preaches, isn't it? But the preface is that the first and great commandment, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind and with all your strength. Loving your neighbour comes next. So I've come to the conclusion that God is saying lots of things to me, possibly to you and to all these groups of people. I want to hear God's voice. I believe he's speaking to us. We should listen very carefully and talk with him. Today, if you hear his voice, don't be stubborn and turn a deaf ear. God bless us all.